he was the AFI, like American Film Institute's number one villain of the yep. past hundred years from a survey from back in 2006 or something. So right, maybe, right. who knows if the Joker used to. Yeah, but, you know, but you know that was like a Hannibal Rising like tie-in that the studio paid for or something. <laughs> Just promo. Yeah, it was the Lil Gaspard version. It yeah. was the, yeah. the number one one. Yeah. Um, sure. But because he's like a, a transmedia villain, um, and everybody sort of comes across him as, uh, in different ways. I'm wondering, what was your first experience uh, with Hannibal Lecter? Well, I think it's exactly that. It's that sort of transmedia, sort of like pop culture thing that, that uh, you know, breaks through from the, the, the material that it's part of and just becomes this like icon of the media. And, and you know, I was a kid when Silence of the Lambs came out. And that was, I think, the sort of big zeitgeist moment when, you know, Anthony Hopkins sort of blew everyone away with this, this performance and got an Oscar for it. I didn't see that movie until I was much, much later. I didn't see that movie when I was nine years old. Um, so it was, it was, my access point to it was The Simpsons and Ace Ventura and like, you know, um, Hannibal Lecter showing up in A Star is Burns, that really great Simpsons episode, <laughs> like auditioning for the role of Montgomery Burns. And I remember uh, he's pro probably mentioned by Ace Ventura as well in the first Ace Ventura movie. Um, and it was just like, I remember asking, I, I don't know if it's my dad or my mom after, you know, like Hannibal Lecter came up. I'm just like, who's that? Like, what's, the, who, what's that guy? What's he all about? And, you know, my parents were probably like, oh, you know, he's like a guy who murders people and eats them. And it was just like, probably not a conversation they wanted to have. Yeah. Um, I just remember being sort of like, amused by the fact that his name was Hannibal and he was a cannibal. I'm like, oh, it rhymes, that's hilarious. But it was, it was that sort of like pop culture awareness of just like, oh, this is bigger than just this movie. It's being parodied in other movies. And, you know, The Simpsons is, is the access point for so many things like that. Um, but like actual first experience with the character Hannibal, it was probably really Scott's Hannibal. Um, I don't think I saw Silence of the Lambs until after that movie came out. And you know, I was working at a, at a rep cinema at the time in the beaches. And so I probably saw, I was big, you know, I was a teenager. So of course I was a big Ridley Scott fan too. I'm like Ridley Scott movie, I get to see for free at the Fox all the time. And I'll just watch it over and over again. I think I saw it four or five times. <laughs> um, and it's not, it's not a great movie. It's not a great movie. And, 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 and I, I think personally, and Anthony Hopkins is in like full, like cartoon Hannibal mode. Like it's, he's a bit of a parody of himself at that point. And the same goes for, Red Dragon, and I think I saw Silence of the Lambs in between that, in the between there somewhere, and was like, oh, okay, I get it. And then I saw Red Dragon, and I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. It's Brett Ratner. I wasn't like big on it, but then I was like, what? It's like Michael Mann made this movie before, and that's when I discovered Manhunter, and that's when I like came around to Brian Cox as being like, you know, I would say I'm more of a Brian Cox Hannibal fan than I am an Anthony Hopkins fan, just by virtue of the way I discovered it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, never, I, was, I never saw it. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, uh, I completely agree. And it's funny that you went essentially entirely backwards chronologically with those, yeah. With yeah. those films. And then never saw the prequel. I never, I never <laughs> I have, to this day, I haven't seen Hannibal Rising. So, yeah. <clears throat> um, That's but I fair. guess I, yeah. Yeah. So what, uh, what about you, man? Like where, what's your access point? I'm very curious to know I mean, now. It was, it was uh, similar to you. I, my dad would, would reference Hannibal the Cannibal and Hannibal Lecter. Um, and so it was just sort of like a, a household boogeyman pop culture thing <laughs> in, in our home. It wasn't like in a scary way. It's not like yeah. my dad's telling us bedtime stories about. Right. Uh, no, nothing scary about a man who kills people and eats them. No, there's nothing, absolutely <laughs> not. Um, <laughs> but uh, then it was like you, like the obviously the Star is Burns uh, Simpsons references. I'm sure there were some Animaniacs references, of For course. Sure. Yeah. Um, one that really sticks out in my mind is, um, I know you mentioned Ace Ventura, but there's a, a, a scene in Cable Guy where yes. Jim Carrey puts the meat on his face, his face <laughs> yeah. and does an Anthony Hopkins impression. And that, that sticks with me as one of my first uh, yeah. Yeah. instances of, of, of everything. Um, but I, my first interaction with the character, like seeing, seeing Hannibal on screen, was Silence of the Lambs, and I had been primed being like, this is the scariest movie you'll ever yeah. see. And it's, yeah. it's excellent, and it is scary, but I think I was like 11 
or okay. something. And so I didn't really understand. Like when I was that young, I felt like everything that I would see that was scary, um, that really scared me was something that I thought could affect me or that could right. happen to me. Right. And the fact that that movie is so much about violence against women and right. the violence of the male gaze. Yep. As a 12 year old kid, I felt very safe watching that movie. Right, and right. I watched it, I, I, um, I have a pretty strong memory of watching it with my family. I could tell my mom was very upset about watching this movie. Right, though she'd right. seen it before. And I was just like, hmm, I just don't think it's all yeah. that scary. Uh, and also it's like a procedural thriller too. So it's like, mm -hmm. not, it's not, it, when you see it, you're like, I thought this would be just like a man running around eating people. Like it's much different than that. Exactly. Yeah. There's not uh, a, a ton of uh, cannibalism in, in, <laughs> until you get to, until you get to Ridley Scott's Hannibal right. in, in yeah. the, um, in like the chronology of things, you don't really get to see a lot of uh, Hannibal being terribly violent. Right. Right. Yeah, that's true. But, yeah, so, um, but yeah, and then, yeah, I would say I'm with you in terms of Brian Cox, Cox being the, the best Hannibal. I think that that's, that's almost not debatable. I know that this is a subjective I, I don't, thing. like, I, I don't, like, let me, let me be clear. I think, I think Brian Cox is my favorite, like, big screen Hannibal, but I have to, I have to give it to Mads just because he got to spend, spend so much time with the character. That's like, he, he got to, to play in that, that skin so much longer than the other the other guys, um, and you know I, I, I'll make the distinction. I'm a, hand, a fan of Brian Cox's Hannibal Lecter, and a fan of Brian of Mads Mikkelsen's Lecter. <laughs> right, yeah. Because of the weird yeah, spelling difference. Yeah, that weird spelling difference. I guess it was a. Actually, I don't know. I feel like we we looked into this when we were writing, but when I was writing about it for for that show. Yeah. Um, but. I, I, I assumed that it was like a, a um, copyright issue, but I, I don't think that that's it. I think it's maybe just, just like a, a spelling mistake, maybe, or maybe just they thought it seemed less, I don't know. I don't know what, what the reason there is there, yeah. but it was, um, whatever, it's funny. Yeah, it's, it's a funny fun. little bit it's of fun. a apocrypha. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that, gives, that gives Hopkins all of the, the film lectures, right. other than Gaspar Duleo. Um, if you're, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but yeah, how is, uh, how is that movie? Sorry, is he does he stack up in any way it, here? It's, uh, I mean, it's just kind of forgettable, you know. That's <laughs> fair, 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 fair. Yeah, that's. A, I think that um, you know, it just doesn't have. It's not of the same tier uh, right. as as even. And I, even and I apologize, Ratner's. everybody, to everybody involved. It doesn't really even stack up to Ratner's. Uh, Red Dragon and uh, right, Ed right. Norton's uh, bleach blonde hair. As, <laughs> yep, yep. As will uh, Will Graham. I'm rewatching Hannibal right now with uh, with with Emma, my partner, and um, there are a lot of shocking scenes that uh, that have always stuck out with me. Yeah. Uh, specifically, everything that's like uh, the the way they call it, like field kabuki, which right, is right. where it's the Just Horrific stuff. Horrific. But beautiful, that too. Was very beautiful. It's yeah. a, it's such an incredibly beautiful, beautifully shot television yeah. show. Yeah. Um, you know, looking back on it, what are some of your favorite scenes? Well, I think, you know, you, you, this show is going to be fresher, in, in, more fresh in your mind than it is in mine. But, you know, it's kind of interesting thinking back to the show and what sticks out, um, you know, five or six years on from when I, we last saw it. Um, is that long ago? I think it was more recent than that, but you know, I, like you said, those 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 mortal tableaus that field kabuki, that stuff. I was always like, whoa, like you're not going to forget those images. Um, but as for as for like specific scenes, I think you know, anytime the the raven stag appeared, it oh, always yeah. just like creeped the hell out of me. Um, yeah. And then the stag man Wendigo, when it sort of evolved, started evolving, and just like just really, that stuff has stuck with me. Um, I think I think it's I think it's probably the end of the first season. And correct me if I'm wrong. Where you know it's the big reveal to Jack Crawford, and then their like big fight in the kitchen there. And then when the, when the secret comes out, that's that season two finale. Season yeah. two. Se oh, wow, they really stretched that out. That's amazing. <laughs> they really no, did. Like, um, you know, it's just like that. That sort of like that's two seasons worth of tension of like the audience knowing mm -hmm. knowing everything um, from his reputation, not necessarily seeing it. 
Yeah. Um, but then for like, you, you know, it, you're at, it's at once sort of like, oh, they know, they finally know, thank goodness they know. And it's like, oh God, they know. Like what, <laughs> the, what like everything that carries with it, like shit, like this is, this is gonna be yeah. really bad. <laughs> It's, and just yeah. the, the catharsis of that big fight and and then you know leaving the leaving that season on that really like oh everyone's dead mm -hmm. or like mortally wounded like what is going to happen um yeah. that really yeah i remember just being like oh like i think we couldn't uh my my partner's name is alana and I, my name is will so we were like sold on the show from the get-go it's like oh this show features alana and will it's the best ever and then you know not knowing what their fates were going to be at the end of that it's like ah oh, crap we can't watch it anymore <laughs> yeah yeah tough time to be an alana or a will watching exactly. that show yeah exactly. <laughs> let alone a couple with those <laughs> names yeah what about yeah. you man what like you mentioned the 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 field kabuki but what's the scene that really sticks I, mean, with me? I, I could i suspect based on your writing that maybe something like the the garrett uh like the whole uh trailer scene murder. oh yeah yeah i mean the garrett so, jacob hobbs thing at the very beginning with um with the the way it starts, you know, the very first time that Will kills somebody, it's Garrett yeah. Jacob Hobbs, who's a lesser cannibal, obviously, and then that that's it. We all we all are compared right. to uh, to him. We're all lesser cannibals <laughs> than Mads Mikkelsen. Yeah. Um. So that one is is great, and it's also uh, having rewatched it, and I'm watching it on Blu-ray. So these are like producers' cuts that are a little bit more graphic than we, right. was on Prime Time, but yeah. Um. There's a lot. There's a lot of blood in that scene. It's very kinetic and violent. Uh, that, the the scene you said as well, like that's also in the book um, where the, the final scene is the, the shattered teacup scene in yeah. season two. Um, but there are also two, there is one scene in, at the beginning of season two that uh, I still, uh, gosh, I it kind of makes my stomach turn a bit. There's a, a, a part where it's in the, there's a sort of a two-part season premiere where they're the show's version of buffalo bill from silence of the lambs is like mm. kidnapping people based on uh skin tone and then right. stitching them together into a giant mural of an eye but one yes. of the guys isn't dead and so he like tears himself out and then Oof, runs away. Yeah. I remember this now. Yeah, yeah. so I, I remember watching that and being like, I don't know. I don't know if I can uh, keep doing this, <laughs> this job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that one. And then also, I think my favorite scene in one, or I can't say my favorite scene, one of my very favorite scenes in the, in the whole show is the uh, the Mason meltdown when Michael Pitt's Mason Verger uh, is made to eat himself, cut off his face. Yeah. And, and eat himself and feed yes. it to dogs and uh if yeah. you haven't seen the show and you're watching this uh it's actually a surprisingly funny scene <laughs> so. it, it is if i recall he has a surprisingly good sense of humor about it but i guess the drugs helped um, yeah yeah uh, and just you know while you're talking about memorable stuff i think i think that the, you know the big finale of the entire show um even just seeing that like the show's treatment of like the tooth fairy arc um i thought richard armitage was fantastic mm -hmm. but that's the Manhunter fan in me saying that, but but you know that that final that final scene in the series and just like you know they keep talking about Hannibal season four, I'm like don't do it man just 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 don't do it guys like like it's that's that was the just well oh, like it was it was yeah a great end. I agree with you. I think it's a perfect ending. I don't think they need to do it though. Every now and again, I think okay, do a Silence of the Lambs miniseries and a small. Like just keep Hannibal's role small, like in Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, and then yeah. and then that's it. But but then I don't know. But I don't want. It's already perfect. So you know. Yeah. Mm. Let let some other actors and and filmmakers or showrunners or whatever let them take a crack at it. Exactly. You really in. Yeah. The dealer ranchesses who own the rights to that would love for literally anybody <laughs> yeah. to yeah. adapt it. You know, we were talking about uh, how we're all lesser, can lesser cannibals in comparison to Max Mickelson. And, um, you know, there's an essay in my book about uh, the ethics of cannibalism. And I'm wondering, hypothetically, is there any scenario in which you would eat a person? First of all, I got to say, I really, really enjoyed that essay. It, it captured that sort of like 
drunken candor that one has with a, f a picture going around. Um, I felt very much like the server reading that. It's <laughs> like, I'm, I'm overhearing something. It's putting me off. And yet I've been there where you just, you know, you've had a few and you're having a fun, controversial sort of conversation where you don't agree necessarily, but you're getting to an interesting place and getting some interesting information about the people you're with. Um, yeah, so I, I really enjoyed that. I just wanted to get that out of the way. Thank you. Um, would I eat a person? So I'm reminded of this, I think it was a Reddit story of this dude who, who really mangled his foot. Like he got, yeah, I think he broke his, his foot terribly and they had to amputate it. Um, and this guy was like, well, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. He asked the doctors to, if he could keep the foot. And they're like, why do you want to keep the foot? He said, well, I don't know. Like, you know, that's my foot. I want to keep it. And so apparently, I don't know if this is a Snopes article, like if this is actually true, but apparently he, he then suggested to his buddies, like, listen, guys, I got, I have my foot. You're never going to have this opportunity in your life again. Let's make some tacos. Let's make, let's, let's cook, cook the meat for my foot and see what it's like. Oh my God. And, and in that scenario, I'm just like, you know what? Like you've got his buy-in, you've got his permission. No one has died. You mentioned the, the German cannibal, uh, the, the engineer guy. You know, that is like the most ethical consumption I can imagine of human flesh. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it were that kind of scenario where it's like, would you try it? You have an opportunity to try it. And this is the sort of background to it. You're like, yeah, yeah, I would. Mm -hmm. okay. I, and, yeah. and I would be interested to share that experience with others, you know, just as like, listen, guys, like, or people, whoever's there, like, you know, yeah. let's, let's try this. Like, I'm, 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 a, I'm a guy who will, will try any kind of food really once. Mm. Um, to you know, much to the chagrin of others, but you know, I've, I've thought, like I had some interesting food in Iceland and and in France and things like that that some, most would might like, look down upon, and I, you know, I've made my peace with that. But <laughs> but it's just you know, kind of like you have an opportunity to do something, you should try it. It's there's all kinds of ethical, you know, like I'm I'm debating whether or not it's ethical to eat certain kinds of animals, and we're talking about the uh, ethics of eating a human being. So. <laughs> It's a slippery slope, <laughs> but yes, yeah. I would under certain conditions, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's funny that you say that about, you compare it to like, you know, um, you could just like, you know, pick up the, pick off the like red paint throwing style uh, animals, like veal or, you know, foie gras or something like that. Yeah. It's yeah. like in that, in that foot scenario you're describing, that's more ethical in my mind than than veal the the veal doesn't consent to it but if it's like right. you know if you know if you offer me your foot and and you're like hey look i'm cooking this up whether you whether yeah. you eat it or they not, were just gonna but... throw it out <laughs> exactly there are starving children all over right the world right right without a foot to eat um of course <laughs> the danger is that you know mythically yeah, I don't. I I don't know how the rumor got started. I think it's just because it's it's like a good Twilight Zoney twist. Is like once you get a taste for it, right? You know. <laughs> so they so they say start you know, with the, start with the foot though. It can't can't be that good. Right, and, and there's all you know. It'll drive you mad. There's all kinds of stuff about you know consumption of flesh. But I, I guess that probably goes back to just stigmatizing it back in the day when you know this kind of thing was frowned upon and still remains. Um, just, to, just to quickly uh, add another little anecdote to this. Have you read the Crusader Kings 3 story about the uh, man who, who quested after uh, a certain like victory in, the, in his game? Oh, which no, involved, I haven't. Which involved eating the Pope. <laughs> you, have, you have to read this. I, I, yes, it occurs to me that as a fan of, as, as a fan of um, cannibalism, I suppose, or at least the concept <laughs> like of it. I'm a cannibal fan, yeah. And, and, and you know... Catholicism in certain regards. You should read this. Um, yeah, long story short, the guy basically trained his culture over time to, you know, cre treat sacrificial human consumption as like a victory condition. Oh, and wow. he was, he was, his kingdom was at odds with the, the Roman popes. And he was just like, I'm, I'm gonna eat the pope. That's, <laughs> that was his end game. And, and he succeeded. He got there. He executed and ate the Pope. He got a little sick. His king got a little sick, but he got through it. And and everyone was just like, "Yeah, he ate the Pope!" Like it was, just, <laughs> it was a, a great victory for his 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 kingdom. Um, That's a very funny article. Yeah, I'll, wow. I'll send it to you. Yeah, please do. I'll I'll, I'll 
put it in the video notes for this in case people don't know. Like it's a, this is a, str a, a strategy video game that is based uh, around, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I've only played the first one a bit and it's a little bit, uh, it was a bit dense. meticulous for where I was at the time. It's very dense, yeah. Yeah, but it's about uh, social relationships. You're like, you are a world leader at a certain time period and you, you electioneer or uh, so, you, need to, you, you need to navigate hereditary heredity and things like that and exactly that. Yeah. yeah yeah so it's uh yeah uh wow <laughs> <laughs> that's great um yeah one more one more question on on uh on food i feel like this already answers it because we already said like well consent is fine would you eat i i'm there's uh this startup that never really got off the ground that was right. going to make celebrity uh, lab-grown meats, yes. and uh, they they said that they would make it out of Kanye and Ellen and J. Law and Mint, several others. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, others. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, would you eat celebrity sausage? I have I have no no real interest in that kind of like even if it were like lab grown. Mm. Isn't that the plot of Antiviral, the Brandon Cronenberg film? Like. I think there's, so. There's illness, like you get, you get the, you can get the, the celebrities' colds and, and viruses and things like that, which is like you can get like herpes and stuff from your your idol, and so it's it's very strange. Yeah. Um, but then I think it is taken to the extent of like you and you can get their meat now. Yeah, it's terrifying. I I would not. That's that's really gross to me. That like you're, yeah. you're consuming the the celebrity, the fame, like to be connected to them. It's very strange. Yeah, and you don't want to. You don't want to do that uh, with with Alan either. That's yeah, gross. I'm good. I'm good on that on that front. But yeah. Kanye, no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> would, uh, what about yourself? Is, would you? Would you? Absolutely not. No. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, the voice of dissent in that in that specific scenario is definitely my strong opinion. I feel like it's like eating a eating snot. That's not. The same yeah it's that's it's gross it's yeah. Gross. yeah you know eating a foot that's culture eating uh celebrity salt sausage it's an important distinction know. guys Come on. Yeah, <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. for people who are, are watching like if they like uh hannibal or any of the things we've been talking about uh as a uh, a veteran cultural critic what would you recommend for for other people who who like that stuff and and would mo want more well, I, I was struck when you, you asked, you mentioned this question prior to the interview that like, you know, I, I kind of like, I, I feel like I gravitate towards some of this material. Like I'm, I'm sort of like seeking out similar flavors and tastes of this particular meat. Um, yeah, so I would say stuff like um, Disco Elysium, the, the uh, video game, which is like a, a, a an RPG game, isometric view. It's just like this weird procedural mystery game. It's just, it's got, you know, some very dark and disturbing and fucked up elements. Uh, it has murder, it has mystery, it has uh, inner turmoil and addiction and trauma and just, but you get to role play it. Um, I was I was playing it earlier this summer when I had no home because my apartment had flooded and, um, you know, the pandemic was still, well, the pandemic was the pandemic and you know it was like i'm in too dark of a place to be playing this game it was like that intense of an experience so i will recommend with an asterisk of just like be careful it's a dark game um disco elysium um on the subject of brandon cronenberg his new movie possessor which comes out very soon is i would say as another very shot in toronto production um kind of cool it's it's uh it's about it's kind of like Avatar meets, um, remember that game Messiah from ages ago where you were like a little like angel baby, like oh, yeah. cherub who yeah. took over people? Um, that was from, by the Earthworm Jim studio. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, but as, essentially the, the movie is um, this, this character possesses, takes over others in order to t um, carry out contract kills. Uh, but like has to sort of perform as this person they have to like research and it's like it's all about acting and performance to fit in as this person uh and then they they carry out their job and have to return to them their self 
with all of this drama and all of this experience and this new personality sort of like grafted onto their own and just really messes the person up who's doing this. And then they go on to their next job and they're carrying all this into this next person. And um, really, really interesting. I think it's conceptually more interesting than it actually like is in, in practice, but mm. really good looking movie shot in Toronto, got a great cast, Andrea Reesboro uh, and Christopher Abbott and Jennifer Jason Lee. Really enjoyed it. Uh, it. Yeah, it struck a chord with me. I saw that recently and I think it comes out in a couple of weeks um, on like VOD, so be oh. available, readily available. Um, yeah. And then maybe just devs was like the last thing that sort of like uh, aligned with Hannibal in my head when, when you, you asked this question, um, just like the balance of sort of the, the big ideas, the beauty, the violence, um, mm-hmm. doesn't always work, but, but still like, you know, memorable. For, for many of those reasons. And that's the, that's the FX series? Yeah, with, um, mm-hmm. with um, Ron Swanson, um, Nick, uh, Nick Offerman, Offerman. Yeah. Who, in a very uncharacteristically, like really uh, <laughs> brooding, evil, strange, you know, um, it's Silicon Valley gone awry. That's the entire, right. you know. Concept. It's always the comedians that can do it best. It's, it's good, it's good. He's great, he's great. Um, yes. But yeah, that's, that's sort of where I landed on that. Um, yeah. What do Those you are, recommend to people when, when they ask you, like, I love Hannibal, what else can I watch? I mean, the first thing I do is usually, I'm like, well, did you know they're, uh, <laughs> they're based on uh, some right. very good novels? Uh, but uh, usually my, my go-to is, um, is The Talented Mr. Ripley. Mm, um, okay. In season three, when it gets to be a bit more uh linear less episodic and they're going through uh there's some stuff that happens in italy and then and then elsewhere uh a lot of the aesthetic and a lot of the interpersonal exchanges very much from uh like directly referenced in uh from sorry Interesting. Talented Mr. Ripley. Yeah. I did not I did not know that. Have you seen The American Friend, the uh Vim Vendors film with Dennis Hopper and uh um who's the guy who plays Hitler in the in the downfall meme? Um Oh, oh, oh. He just passed away and he's a great yeah. actor. And I'm gonna look it up because I can't leave this conversation <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I'm knowing who it is really quickly. Sorry. Um uh American Friend. Great, great movie, and it is uh, Dennis Hopper plays the Ripley character. It's one of the other, oh. based on one of the other books. Yeah. Uh, the actor is Bruno Gans, the late Bruno great Gans. Bruno Gans. Um, yeah, great, great movie. Uh, also has like a bit of a different European vibe because they're in Berlin and then New York. But yeah, lots of mm-hmm. art, art forgery and art dealing and intrigue. Interesting. And, tra- and train fights. Great. If you like, yeah. If you like those. <laughs> well. I'm not saying this is. That. I'm not saying this aligns with Hannibal in any way, shape, or form, but it certainly aligns with talented Mr. Ripley. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing I think that within the Brian Fuller Hannibal, there is enough Tom Ripley DNA yeah. that uh, that you know it'll be maybe two degrees more of separation. Cool. Um, cool. But uh, yeah, that sounds great. I'm going to check that out for sure. And then uh, uh, I guess my last recommendation is if you have an opportunity uh, to eat a friend's foot. <laughs> go for it <laughs> do it but only if he says it's okay only if it's with enthusiastic continual consent right i mean yes yeah under the right circumstances <laughs> thank you so much for uh for chatting with me tonight well this thanks peter been... it was a lot it was a lot of fun and it's been too long since we've been able to just shoot the shit over <laughs> you know face to face at least yeah yeah exactly this is uh this has been a treat